Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson, episode two in our series on fat loss options. Today, we're going to we're gonna dovetail from your rate of loss or speed of fat loss into genetic factors, which, which Adam brought up last segment. And uh, I'll give you another example of a client that just started with me this week, Adam. I, I saw photos of somebody who was a, a national competitor and was happy to see in somebody who is in the master's category, the phenomenal ability to get lean. And so I saw, wow, she's really, really lean. And so I know we can build on that. I immediately start thinking of peaking processes and ways to make her look better. But knowing that she is ectomorphic even uh, informed me greatly on, on the type of approach to take from the beginning, because I know we don't have to necessarily worry about a slower rate loss, as we warned about in episode one, but muscle retention is going to be huge. And it, it was kind of confirmed by the fact she said that, yeah, right now I'm eating about 2,600 calories and I'm only up a handful of pounds from my last contest. So I thought, you know, definitely dealing with somebody who needs to worry more about muscle preservation. And so I'm curious when you look at the whole genetic spectrum, how you, you think about it or, or design it for clients. Yeah. The, the variance in genetics is fascinating to me and uh, it, it's just not fair sometimes, you know, but uh, this is why we have different contexts and how we work with people. I'm currently working with an Olympian right now who has dieted down faster than probably anyone I've humanly seen. Um, you know, we, we can assume a pace of two pounds pretty easily a week if we get carried away. Uh, I'm thinking of my girl who just did the Arnold Jesse hip, just came off a prep back into a prep. So lost at stunning speeds with, you know, relatively good muscle retention. And then I think of some of my clients with like PCOS or maybe, uh, you know, they've had hundred pound weight losses and just how much they have to dig to just lose, you know, a quarter of a pound a week. And uh, maybe even having a more adaptive metabolism as well as what I noticed with those groups of weight loss, you know, you're at an intake for four weeks and you just know you're going to have to change about every four weeks and you're getting down to those, uh, you know, double digit carb numbers and there's not a whole lot of room to go after that. So it's, uh, those are definitely more difficult clients to work with. Um, I welcome that. Uh, that's where I think my value as a coach comes in even a little bit more is when you're, when you're trying that hard for that progress and micromanaging things and, uh, you know, having a coach who can make biscuits from scratch versus just acquiring talent is a, is definitely something that you want as a client. Yeah. Well said. And as it relates to fat loss options, when I think of the clients who, who are metabolically a little bit more challenged then you start thinking of, A, we have to go back to segment one in this series, episode one, which is we just may need more time. Your rate is going to be lower. We have to count on that. Doesn't mean you're out of the game. We're just we're just having to buffer that in. And, and then secondly, just because somebody loses weight slower doesn't mean that they necessarily will preserve muscle that much easier. Oftentimes, because they are dieting on lower caloric levels and more cardio, uh, the, and it's going to be more difficult to get to that final lower body fat percentage. It's just as as much of an issue, and they have to guard against muscle loss as well. So sometimes just driving carbs lower and so forth is not the answer. Uh, how, how do you approach the differences in in genetics given uh, different options for fat loss? Yeah, we we need to do something with those slower groups that are help their metabolic rates not adapt as easily. They may need more diet breaks. Uh, maybe we do a little bit more cardio for those groups. But the key is, is to, you know, keep the pace relatively slow and, you know, give the breaks when needed. I think one of the biggest things I see in those groups, though, are people that complain maybe how long they were in prep and, I still get people that ask me, 
can I do 12 week prep with you? And I say, yeah, if you want to lose for sure, you know, absolutely. Um, but you know, I find the median average to be around 20 to 24, but does that make me a horrible coach? If I have somebody who has a long way to go and we take 40 weeks to get there, you know, it's, um, it, you have to be open-minded about the timing and how long it might take you to get there. If you want to win, if, if you want to take, you know, this is the new big thing, semi-glutide and not eat and drop 40 pounds in 12 weeks. Mm. So be it, uh, you know, you may get contests ready, but I guarantee your person that took, you know, 20 or 40 weeks to get there. If you had a twin to, identically go through the same weight loss process would look better at the end of the day. For sure. For sure. So those of you watching and listening, just, just consider the genetic differences and, and try to isolate what methods may be better for you uh, because it, it will make a difference in the long run, but we're going to see you next time. We're going to start covering the different methods. As I mentioned, the first one being calorie cycling. We'll see you next time in contest prep you.